Hello everybody, welcome back to another Gregorius Maths video. Today, I'm going to be introducing the polygamma functions um, as a continuation of number theory 1.5. Also, I will be regularly uploading basic calculus videos along with my more advanced series on algebra and number theory and etc etc. Okay? But, yeah, so check out my last video for the proofs of the theorems which will occur in this video. And by the end of this video, we'll have a beautiful Taylor series expansion for the digamma function. And it's really nice. Okay, so, how do we define the nth order polygamma functions? Well, it's just... of z is equal to the nth derivative of our digamma function, which we d d introduced in the last video, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to derive the Taylor series expansion for it, okay? So, remember, in the last video, we showed that um, c of z plus 1 is equal to negative oily macaroni plus the sum from n equals um, 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over z plus n, okay? But because we want to get a Taylor series expansion for c of z, okay, this means that c of z is equal to negative oily mac minus 1 over z plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 over z plus n. Okay, because of the reflection formula for the diagram function, which I derived in the last video. Okay, all of the stuff that I derived in the last video, you can extend to the polygamma functions by differentiating n times and finding a pattern. Okay, in this case, I'm going to do it for the series expansion but you can easily do it for the, um, what's it called, the reflection and the recurrence relations, okay? By just differentiating n times and finding a pattern, okay? Now, we have this. Let's differentiate this bad boy. So this means that the trigamma function, okay, which is the first order polygamma function, is equal to, well, this is just a number, okay? It's pretty much half. <laughs> okay. Oily Mac will go away. The derivative of negative 1 over z is negative negative positive 1 over z squared plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity. This thing here is completely independent of z. So this will go away. This is just a constant every time. Okay. And then this here becomes, well, this is equal to z plus n to negative 1. And, okay, f and we're not going to have to take the chain rule into account because the derivative of the inside is just 1. Okay, so when we do the derivative of this, this is equal to, bring the negative 1 down to the front, so we get negative 1 over z plus n to the, neg to the positive 2, sorry, to the positive 2, because we had to subtract 1 to from the power, Okay. Okay, but because this is negative, that's negative, this whole thing becomes positive. Okay, and so we get 1 over z plus n squared. And now, th notice that this goes from n equals 1 to infinity. However, if this were to go from n equals 0 to infinity, the first term would be 1 over z plus 0 squared, which is 1 over z squared, okay, which is this term here. So actually, this equals... 1, the sum, sorry, from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over z plus n squared. Okay, that's pretty nice. Now we can use this to differentiate again. Alright, now this means that the second order polygamma function is equal to sum from n equals 0 to infinity of... Well, that thing there is just z plus n t 
to negative 2. Okay, so when we differentiate this, okay, we're left with, bring this down to the front, negative 2 times z plus n to negative 3. So we're left with negative 2 times 1 over z plus n cubed. Okay, and this negative 2 is just 2 factorial times this and this negative 1 to the power of some odd number, 3 for example. Okay? Any odd number, what's your favourite number? I don't really know. Okay? Now, we're starting to see a pattern here and whenever, and like with the Taylor series, which I I think I was video on the Clorin series ages ago, okay? Whenever you use the power rule repeatedly, you're going to start getting factorials, okay? And this is what we're going to see here, because now this implies that the third order polygon function, okay, is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, well, this right here, if we do this in our heads, this is z plus n to the negative 3. Bring the negative 3 down to the front, subtract 1 from the power. Negative 3 and this negative 1 cancel, leaving us with 3 factorial, okay, times 1 over z plus n to the power of 4 times negative 1 to the squared, okay? Any even number will do. Now we're starting to see a pattern. This means that the nth order polygamma function is equal to, and this is really cool because now we not only have a series expansion for our digamma function, or our trigamma function, or our second order polygamma function, okay, we have up for our nth order, okay? Really cool. This equals, well, okay, we have n factorial, okay, times negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, okay, because when this exp uh, when this derivative here is odd, we get an even power. You can put minus, I don't really care, whatever your favourite operation is out of the two, okay, and then times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over z plus n to the power of n plus 1. Actually, no, I'm going to have to use another letter. Well, because this is look, because this looks, this will look familiar, I will use s. Okay, so we, okay, because it just reads nicer than, in fact, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Okay. And now this thing right here is actually the Hervid zeta function, which is just like a multivariable zeta function, okay? This right here is a zeta function which depends on two variables, the Hervid zeta function. This is zeta of um, s plus 1 comma z, okay? And when you change the index, okay, and you let z equal 1, okay, this will be the regular zeta function, the Riemann zeta function, okay? But for now... We're, we're left with this. Now let's derive the Taylor series for the digamma function. Okay, so here we have our formula which we just derived, okay? And here we have the formula for our general formula for the Taylor series, okay? Which is a, pretty much like the Maclaurin series, except we're not restricted to x0 being 0, okay? It can be any number we want. In this case, we'll choose it to be 1, for reasons which will become beautiful later, okay? So this implies ew, that I've broken my pink pen, okay, kind of, I think I can still use it, okay? This implies that the nth, sorry, that the digamma function is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth order digamma function over n factorial times z minus 1 
sorry, the nth order derivative evaluated at 1 times z minus 1 to the power of n. Okay? And this is, yeah, it's really beautiful. Okay? All right, this implies, and um, this equals, sorry, well, Sorry, this equals, well, something plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of this stuff. Okay, so we have to look at the zeroth term, if you will. Well, the bottom will be 1, so we don't really care right now. Okay, this thing will evaluate to 1. So actually, it's just going to be the diagonal function evaluated at 1, which we know from the last video is negative oily macaroni. Okay, plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of our digamma boys, okay, which is this. So negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times n factorial times the Herbert zeta function of n plus 1. Now, because we're evaluating at 1, so 1, okay, all over n factorial times z minus 1 to the power of n. And now this equals negative oily mac plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times, well, these two bad boys cancel. This here, we've already said, is just our regular Riemann zeta function at n plus 1 times z minus 1 to the power of n. I think this is pretty awesome, okay? But let's, and this is it. This is our Taylor series expansion, which is just really cool because it's an, yet another number theoretical connection between the, well, in this case, well, this is di indirectly a number theoretical correct connection between the gamma function and zeta function. In this case, it also involves the derivatives of the gamma function which in my opinion just makes the whole thing more beautiful. Involving the Herbert zeta function, the diagonal function, um, technically our normal gamma function, our normal Riemann zeta function. Okay, now to, you know, rest a little bit, we'll just derive some easy stuff. Okay, Be it's only easy because of the last video. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. Number theory 1.4, if you're watching really late and it's in my playlist, okay? So, we showed in the last video that C of Z minus C of 1 minus Z is equal to, what is it equal to? It's equal to pi times the cotangent of pi times Z. Okay? Now, differentiating this n times leaves us with the reflection formula for our polygamma functions. Okay? Really easy, one liner nth order polygon function of z minus the nth order polygon function of 1 minus z is equal to pi times the nth derivative with respect to z of the cotangent of pi times z. Okay? Right, cool. Now we have another easy thing. Okay, constant one. Slightly less easy, but still pretty easy. Okay, this was the main point of the video. But we also have another consequence of this, okay? Um, namely our um, recurrence relation. Remember that C of, of Z plus 1, I like to use Z because I'm pretty sure this holds for complex numbers as well, of Z plus 1 is equal to 1 over Z plus C of Z. Okay? Now we need to be slightly careful when differentiating this n times, okay? Okay, so let's do this. d dz of 1 over z is equal to negative 1 over z squared, okay? Now, the second derivative with respect to z of 1 over z is equal to, well, this becomes negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, um, so we get 2 
factorial, I believe there will be factorials in this pattern, times 1 over z cubed. Okay, now the second derivative, I mean the third derivative with respect to z, okay, of 1 over z is equal to negative 1 to the power of, let's say, 3 times 3 factorial times 1 over z to the power of 4. Okay, so in general, now we're seeing a pattern. We have that the nth derivative of 1 over z is just negative 1 to the n times n factorial times 1 over z to the power of n plus 1. So this here implies that the nth order polygamma function, okay, evaluated at z plus 1 is equal to this bad boy here. Well, just generalize this easily, is negative 1 to the nth power times n factorial times 1 over z to the n plus 1. Okay, and this is a basic introduction to some pretty um, nice properties, especially this one. I really like this one, okay of the polygamma functions and from now on I'm going to be moving back to number theory. I'm just doing this because I felt that because I got reintroduced to the digamma functions by a viewer who requested that I shout out the drain gang. I'm not sure who they are but shout out to you guys I guess and who technically reintroduced me to the, gamma, the digamma function by rec by asking for this for the digamma function video but then i saw that the polygamma function stuff was so cool i had to do another video on it but from now on i will be carrying on carrying on my series on abstract algebra and also basic calculus if you are one of those viewers who's watching this because you're my friend i will be making basic calculus videos which hopefully you guys understand and you will learn from them. And I'll gradually build up the level, but hopefully it will feel like the toad who's gradually being heated. So you won't notice until you're like, you know, you know, like really high level multivariable calculus that you've risen so high. That's my goal, okay? I should be uploading those really quickly, okay? But for now, I'm signing off. Goodbye. Hello guys, before the end of this video, I want to say a shout out to Drain Gang. I'm not sure who that is, but I've been asked to shout them out, so okay. And a huge shout out to Benjamin Adrenaline, who's a new Civiv channel. Okay, very good content. And yeah, goodbye.